do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. So, I wanted to address a few things today. Um, I wanted to talk about origin and the Catholic Church. Well, origin was a theosophist, and he left behind um, one of the clearest theosophical writings ever um, called on the first principles. It goes by other names, but it's on the first principles that he's laying out his Gnostic philosophy. Well, this became, uh, came to the attention of the Catholic Church, okay, that this individual had um, done this. Uh, it said that he martyred himself for the 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 faith um, the Gnostic faith okay um, and so he was definitely in opposition with what the Catholic Church was doing um, he could foresee it he can write the first principles he can foresee how somebody is going to take his writing and corrupt it and so let's talk about that corruption, the doctrine of sin. This is a man-made doctrine. Do you get that? Do you get that Paul was a human being? Do you get that he had his own agenda? Do you get that? That he wanted to say he was the regent of the Christ? Because that's all it's all about. It's all about regency. Look up that word. The history of that word. Let me explain regency to you. So, the Catholic Church anathematizes origin. And what does that mean? That means that they have blackballed that individual's teachings and writings, and they put a target on him. That's what that means. So isn't it funny that you find in their own catechism Origen's teaching in its entirety without any mention of sin? No mention of sin whatsoever. Sin is a man-made doctrine. And if you're a Thelemite, don't be talking about sin to me. It's a man-made doctrine. It didn't come from God's. No. It is a corruption of Aristotle's ethics. That's what it is. Let me explain to you what I mean. For all of you that have done some research on the nature of the human consciousness, then you, you obviously know that we see it in two ways. All the time. Up has a down. Cold has a hot. I mean, and on and on and on and on. This is how consciousness works. This constant duality. Now, I'm not saying there's a duality. Please don't get me wrong on that. Everything is related. There is no real duality. But people believe this. And so, if you take an individual who is not educated in philosophy, and you place a man-made doctrine in front of him, he doesn't know the difference between a man-made doctrine and a divine doctrine. He doesn't. He doesn't know what he's looking for. He's told, hey, listen, there's purity. Okay? And there's sin. Notice how this is playing off of this paradox, this duality that I was talking about within our consciousness. 
Notice how we have purity and we have sin. Oh, so how difficult is it to say we have virtue and we have vice? Ah, that's where, that's what they did. And if you're a Christian, you got to live virtuously. If you're a Satanist, you're, you're expected by the herd to live unrighteously. In a sinful way. Through vice. But all this is an illusion. It's not the truth. That's not how the golden mean works. And if you look into it, you can read right through it. You can see it. So I'm here to talk about that scandal. How do you drive a man to his death for his own individual faith? Anathematize him. Which when you become anathematized, that's when you're really hitting a nerve. That's when you're speaking truth and somebody has to come out and stop you. Because some people believe you can't handle the truth. You can't handle the whole truth. It would kill you. It would drive you to despair. You can't handle my truth. You couldn't handle it. Now, back to origin. It's in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Don't believe me? Go look it up. And so, their doctrine, it's not Christian, it's pagan. What do I mean by pagan? I mean heathen. Oh, everything's heathen. That's right, it is. So what is Christianity? What is this difference that's been made? Now, I'm a holist. I consider myself to be a holistic instrumentalist. And that means, as an instrument, I, I'm acting as a region of a power or a force. I'm not going to put a name to it. To name it is to limit it. It has no limit. You people who have given in to this duality, this belief in good and evil, an absolute good and evil, you're idiots. You're idiots. And you don't think they don't see that people are following a man-made doctrine? Oh, well, let's give them another one. Let's give them another man-made doctrine. Let's tell them how a particular person was chosen by God to lead everybody. I got news for you. Everybody. Everybody, every human being has that instinct in them. And you're going to tell me that blood? You're going to tell me blood? A bloodline? What bloodline? What bloodline are you talking about? Origins bloodline? Because let me remind you, before all of this, there was no Jesus Christ. Before all of this.
those first principles came from origin. And that whole tradition, Plato, Pythagoras, Tao Te, Hermes, Thoth, Mercury, Ready for another one? Enki. This is the bloodline. It's a spirit. It keeps going back to France. I've looked at it. Keeps going back to France. Goes back to the French craft. Goes back to Obea. Goes back to witchcraft. Goes back to France. Masonry. Goes back to France. All paths don't lead to Rome. They lead to France. That's a culture. Let me remind you, the Roman people stole the Greek culture. They said, oh, this is cool, we'll take it for our own. We'll take it for our own. No. The Gnostic current comes out of France. It's French. Now, I want to address myself. I've been anathematized. The OTO, the Ordo Templi Orientis, doesn't want you to hear what I have to say. They don't want you to hear Aleister Crowley was a witch. Who initiated him? Who initiated Aleister Crowley? Alan Bennett. Alan Bennett was a member of Pickingill, George Pickingill's Pickingill Nine Covens. Nine satanic hereditary covens. Now, why do I call it satanic? Not in the sense that it is satanic, but in the sense that the hereditary crafters said that's not what we're doing over here, so that's in opposition to us, i.e. it's satanic. You see, because in certain other crafts, the magister was a male. And he initiated everybody, male and female. In Pickingill's craft, however, there's a system that was developed that the man would be initiated by the woman and that the woman would be initiated by the man. And therefore, not only a high priest or a witch king ruling over women, but an organization where the woman is equal to the man. They're necessary in order to initiate the current of the craft. Now, what is this craft that I'm speaking about? This craft gave birth to the Golden Dawn. We know this because we find that the Golden Dawn, the true current of the Golden Dawn, came through an organization that most people aren't even aware of. The 
you know. You were distracted so well you didn't even see them doing their work. But what they left behind was a body of journals that lays out the whole Ogdewadic Gnostic realization. Gnosis. That which transmits Gnosis. And make, make no mistake, that was the goal of the Golden Dawn. To transmit Gnosis. So, you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with the content of the video of origin and the Catholic Church and the doctrine of sin. What does that have to do with Pickingill being considered satanic? Well, Let's look at the nature of what my family, my, one of my ancestors, Henry Adams, states about Satan. It's a multiplicity. And so, yeah, it wasn't accepted by certain hereditary crafters that a male initiate a female and a female initiate a male. They said, it, that doesn't make any sense. Until Pickingill said, well, wait a minute. I was in France. And that's how I was initiated. I was initiated by a woman. By a high priestess. High Priestess of who? Hecate. How do we know that? Because they would find a spot, and there's an actual image of this. There is a uh, an artistic rendition of this where they have found a spot at a crossroads on a hill. And there are three women who are initiating a male candidate. And on the left hand of the high priestess is a goat. There's no other male in the circle. Now, this image didn't arise from Pickingill. This comes through history, and we can find this image uh, through history. We find and we see that the image that I'm speaking of, which is right here. Can you see that? This image is a 15th century French miniature. And what's interesting about it is it's called a tableau vivant. It's a living picture. It records what was going on during that time quite accurately. So George Pickingill was telling the truth. And the French craft can prove, unlike the English craft, who claims that the magister, the male magister, initiates both the male and the female. That's a corruption. That is a corruption. We can see that through this image. 
right here. This book is about picking yo, by the way. The Picking Yo Papers uh, by W.E. Lydell and Michael Howard. And um, it, it it's an excellent book. Very deep, though. But if you're a hereditary crafter, I would definitely recommend this book. And all the orders, if they haven't already done that, they should put this book right on there because it spells out um, exactly what was going on. And this says Alistair Crowley's a witch. So my point, let's go back to my original statement about origin in the Catholic Church and tie all this in together. You have been deceived. You have been lied to to be controlled by these people. Me, I'm an Adams. I'm not controlled. I can see. I have the second sight. They're not fooling me. I'm awake. So, you guys keep being deceived. Keep letting these people claim authority that don't have authority. Keep doing these practices that have been abrogated. They're useless. Let's talk about that. The middle pillar ritual, right? That everybody knows so well. Why do we need the middle pillar? Well, it's a reminder, it's a direct path. And it meets you because we find in the new aeon, it's in Malkuth that you find the order. Previously, you had to transcend You had to go to this mystical mountain and learn about the elements and alchemy and you know you know the story with all that. Now it's on earth. We don't need to call it down to earth. It's on earth. It's here. Right now. Wake up, people. Wake up. These things that people are talking about with America, it's a deception. You know what I read the other day? I read this in Henry Adams' Education. Henry Adams again. You're going to keep hearing about him. From the Order of the Dragon. My ancestor. Henry Adams said, and this was an observation that he made, that the English people, the nobility, they believed that the Americans had no mind. 
that they had no mind of their own. That their mind wasn't even based on any type of thought. It was a conceived idea, a conception. That conception was economy. You're being lied to. You're being manipulated over a metaphysical conception. You're being controlled by a piece of paper with a symbol on it, with a sigil on it, with a seal on it. That's the truth. Where's the freedom in that? Are you really free? I am, because I don't care about any of that. I care about helping who wants to hear me. That's who I care about. I care about those who are ready to become greater than they are right now. Those are who I care about. Now some people think they know me. I assure you, you don't. Most of you don't even talk to me. At all. You assume that I'm like everybody else. You assume that I'm, that I haven't learned, I'm, I've gained no education. You're wrong. My education has been in the French craft. Helvetius, Claude Helvetius. Look him up. The potential that we have is based on education. It is based on education. It's our potential. Continuing to play their games and allow yourself to be lied to denies you your potential. Do you really want that potential to be denied? That's the basis of the idea of the doctrine of sin. Deny yourself. That's better than you. That region is better than you. Deny yourself. That's what they're telling you. That's what they're telling you. Deny yourself for their way. And what is their way? What is their way? So, I would suggest you go read Origins on the First Principles and see if you see the word sin in there. See if I've lied to you. Challenge me. See if I lied to you. Go find yourself a Catholic catechism book and tell me Origen's teachings are not interwoven 
appropriated into the Catholic Church. Love is a law, love under will.